Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video update. So we're going to do a little sneak peek for the summer of 2018 for today's uh, second video. Um, Rory released the uh, Gazo of his Sunday Rounder. You can find that video on the homepage uh, right now. So have a look at that and uh, see what you think. But uh, this one is just kind of getting you ready uh, for the summer. Because that's where we're going in terms of the long range uh, at Gazov is uh, now and over the next three months. We released the spring 2018 forecast uh, last week, a uh, week today. So we're finished with the spring updates. Um, and now, of course, the bandwagon rolls on and uh, we roll on to the summer. So I'm going to talk you through the things I'm going to be looking at through the next three months. And we'll also have a look at a few, just a handful of uh, long range seasonal models to see what they're showing at this very, very early stage um, for the summer of 2018. But I want to begin with um, uh, what we started with, really, in terms of the summer, which was uh, a couple of months ago. We uh, did a video looking at the uh, really strange quirk uh, about uh, summers ending in, uh, summers in years ending in the number eight. So we've already got that in the can and it will form a little part of our uh, summer forecast when we come to issue the forecast um, at uh, the end of May. So um, we look through reanalysis at uh, summers in years ending in the number eight. And uh, the very unusual quirk about these summers is that they really are very, very, very poor summers Indeed, uh, most of them. In fact, going all the way back to the year of 1868, there is only one decent summer uh, in a year ending in the number eight. And that is, in fact, the year of uh, 1868. The summer of 1868 was quite a hot summer. But other than that, all of the summers really in years ending in eight are within varying degrees of being uh poor so i mean at one end of the scale we've got summers that are kind of a bit dodgy but they do have some decent weather and at other at the other end of the scale we have really really atrocious summers with these so for example within the reanalysis we have the uh, summer of 2008 the last one in a year ending eight that was very poor summer 1998 was pretty grim 1988 was a terrible summer as was 1968 1958 was a very very poor uh, summer as well as was 1948 and so it goes on all the way back into the 1800s in fact when you combine all of these years back to the year of 1868 and up to 2008 this is what you come out with and it's a shocking sort of um 500 millibar height anomaly with a tremendous amount of blocking to the north of the uk and uh, a really deep trough of below average heights over and to the south. And it places us on the cold side of the jet stream as well for a lot of these summers. So the omens aren't good, to be honest, um, just from that uh, for this coming summer. Uh, but what we did say with that video is that there's no real scientific explanation that I can come up with why that should be the case. Why summers in years ending in the number eight should have such a strong signal for being very poor summers. Uh, the weather doesn't know that uh, we're in a year ending in the number eight. So... Uh, is there something else at work or is it just a statistical sort of anomaly, a statistical quirk, um, kind of like rolling a dice and throwing uh, sixes over 20 times or something? Very unusual um, and uh, I mean very odd to do it, but uh, it can be done kind of thing. So is it that or is there something else that's at work here that's causing these years with um, summers ending in the number eight to be poor. Is there some cycle that we don't yet know about, maybe related to solar activity? It's going to be fascinating to see how the summer of 2018 uh, stacks up. Will it go along with all these other very poor summers in years ending in the number eight? Or will it prove that this is just a statistical sort of anomaly, uh, a, a quirk of fate, if you like, and will we actually have quite a decent summer? It'll be fascinating to see how that works out. 
So, as we go through the summer updates, there are various things we're going to look at. We're going to look at the QBO, the quasi-biennial oscillation, because we are in an easterly QBO. We have been since the second half of last year. We will remain in the easterly QBO, although it will be a diminishing easterly QBO, probably, by the time we get through to the summer. This is 2018 just here. This is from NOAA, uh, and it's showing that uh, at the moment, I talked about this in the Sunday Rounder, um, February's uh, QBO number comes out at minus 19.37. So the EC QBO is still well and truly entrenched, and we expect that to continue through March, April, uh, uh, May as well. Now, when we get through to the summer months, which is just here, that's June, that's July, that's August, I suspect we will still be in the Easterly QBO, but by this point, we will probably be starting to see the Easterly QBO just beginning to level off a little bit. Won't be into Westerly QBO. That won't happen until we get through to these months towards the end of the year, uh, but we start to move into Westerly QBO. But three the summer, we'll probably see a diminishing uh, Easterly QBO. Probably starting off with a fairly strong and mature Easy QBO signal it may actually start to fade out a bit as we go through the summer months themselves. So one of the things we're going to do through reanalysis, I've already spoken to our analogs guru James Ackrill about this, is that uh, we're going to have a look at uh, Easy QBO summers and particularly with the folks able to thought on Easy QBO summers that are fading out of that easterly uh, QBO, but not westerly uh, with the QBO yet. Remember quasi biennial oscillation. It's just an index that's reflecting the strength of the zonal west extension. When you're in an easterly QBO, you are weakening uh, the zonal west east. We will also look at uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, particularly in relation to ENSO. So at the moment, we are still in a uh, very weak La Nina. It's fading out, uh, and we are beginning to return towards ENSO neutral condition. By the summer... And this is going to be quite interesting because by the summer we will uh, start to know where we're going to go with ENSO in the second half of the year. At the moment we're at the spring predictability barrier, which means that a lot of the model output can't really see uh, where uh, ENSO is going to go. Will we remain in La Nina? Will we, will we go to ENSO neutral? Or will we in fact flip into a warm event, into an El Nino? The models won't be able to um, forecast that at this stage. But by the time you get through to the summer, wherever Enzo is going to go into the second half of the year and into the winter of 2018-19, uh, by the summer, that will begin to present itself. So I suspect a big part of these summer updates will be trying to, uh, in a way, be trying to second guess, I think, what is going to happen in the ENSO uh, region. I suspect we'll be looking at uh, La Nina summers. We will be looking at ENSO neutral summers coming out of La Nina. We may even, and it'll depend on what the model output is showing by May, we may even have to look at El Nino summers, developing El Nino summers coming out of the La Nina. At the moment, it could go anywhere. So uh, that's going to be an important factor within the summer updates and probably particularly uh, later on. Obviously, we'll have a look at solar activity as well. We are nearing to uh, solar minimum uh, now. So uh, this is the solar disk on our side of this right now from solarham.net. And I suspect we will, again, through reanalysis, James, uh, we'll have a look at uh, summers that are very close to uh, solar minimum. That will be one of the big factors within the summer updates uh, as well. And as we go along, we're going to be monitoring the spring patterns and we will, through reanalysis again, we'll have a look at uh, analogues that compare to whatever spring we're going to get. It looks like we're going to have a cold March. So um, maybe we're going to, we'll have a look at summers following a cold March and we'll uh, also go along with whatever happens in April and whatever happens in May as well. For instance, if April is a very wet month, we'll have a look at summers that follow uh, very wet Aprils. If May is a very warm month, it might be a very warm month, we'll have a look at summers that follow warm Mays. And through that, we will be able to start building up a picture of what this spring could mean for the summer, if you like. So all of these are going to be happening over the next three months. These will be uh, things that we look at in our summer 
uh, updates. As well as that, though, we'll be looking at the long-range seasonal uh, models. As ever, we'll get our uh, model uh, season model roundups together at the end of each month. We'll do one at the end of March. We'll do one at the end of April. We'll do a third and final one at the end of May. And we'll have a look and see what these long-range models are predicting for um, the summer. And you want to have a little sneaky peek at one or two of those models right now. So uh, let's have a look, see what CFS V2 is showing. Maybe see very very early days for these long range models but this is the 700 bit of our height anomaly from the CFS V2 for the summer of 2018. It's placing an area of below average heights to the northwest of the UK, area of above average heights, quite a long way in the central Atlantic, and it puts us on the cool side of the jet stream as well. So that looks like a pretty cool and uh, pretty unsettled pattern, actually, that uh, CFS V2 is predicting for the summer. Not a particularly strong signal for temperatures, but it looks like the warmer than average temperature anomalies are down in the southeast of Europe, and that's normally a bad sign because the, there's always a balancing act going on uh, with the weather. So if one area is warm, another area will tend to be cool. One area is wet, another area will tend to be dry. So in this instance, the southeast of Europe looks like it's being predicted to get quite a hot summer. So you would expect the northwest of Europe, that area just there, to be potentially quite cool. Because that tends to be one of the ways that uh, the climate, which is always looking for an equilibrium, it's always looking for balance, but it can never find it. It's one of the ways that the climate tries to balance itself out. So if the southeast is warm, northwest will be cold. Conversely, if the northwest is warm, the southeast of Europe will tend to be uh, quite, uh, quite cool. Precipitation anomalies from the CFS V2 aren't looking all that exciting either. Generally, western parts of the UK and Ireland coming out a little bit above average with the rainfall. But some parts, some parts of Scandinavia also coming out a little bit above average with rainfall. You notice drier than average signal for the southeastern part of Europe. So again, this is telling us probably quite an unsettled summer being predicted by uh, CFS V2. This is the Beijing Climate Centre. This is the 200 millibar height anomaly. This one looks a bit dodgy as well. It's placing the area of above average heights uh, to the north, which is never a very good sign in the summer. Again, this is the 200 millibar height anomaly for the summer 2018. Above average heights to the north, below average heights over the UK. We've got a ridge down here in the southeast of Europe, so that would bring hot air up from North Africa into the east of the southeast of Europe. But for us, we're on the cool side of a jet stream around that trough. So again, that implies quite a cool looking signal for the summer, quite an unsettled looking signal for the summer as well. There's our temperature anomaly from the Beijing Climate Centre for this summer. It is coming out a little bit cooler than average for much of central and uh, northwestern Europe. Precipitation anomalies are looking above average, quite substantially and significantly so for uh, the UK and for much of Central Europe as well. So really quite a poor summer being signalled here, uh, would you believe, for the summer of 2018 from the Beijing Climate Centre. It's going for quite a cool and quite a wet uh, summer indeed. This is the Jams Tech model. Now, this doesn't look quite so bad. I mean, this is quite unusual because normally this model will look cold, uh, several months out and then it'll kind of shift to a milder uh, scenario as you get closer to the season. So at this point you would normally expect the uh, Jams Tech models to be quite cold. Uh, actually it's going for a warmer than average summer for the UK and uh, many parts of Europe as well. Scotland does come out a little bit cooler uh, than average but compared to the two models we just looked at I think that's a little bit uh, better I have to say. Uh, in terms of the temperature anomaly for this summer. Precipitation-wise, though, it still doesn't look that good, really. I think much of northern, western, central Europe has a above-average um, precipitation signal here. So, um, and the southeast of Europe is signaled to be quite dry. So, overall, quite a quite an unsettled summer being predicted by Jams Tech. But temperatures are managing to hold up, at least for England and Wales. 
And then finally, we've got the uh, UK Met Office Grossi 5 uh, model. Uh, now, this doesn't cover the full summer. It only covers May to July. So it's kind of like end of spring to the middle of uh, the summer. But again, this one doesn't look all that uh, good, really. We've got above average heights here around uh, Greenland. Below average heights through the Central Atlantic. It looks like the jet stream would be to the south of the UK. Quite a cool, quite an unsettled summer would be expected there, or early summer, let's say. It doesn't cover the late summer, so we can't say uh, that the summer itself would be cool and unsettled. But certainly from May to July, it doesn't look brilliant. Uh, temperature anomalies are close to average, a little bit above average, but remember this model always seems to go for average to above average temperature anomalies. So that's nothing particularly to get excited about and the precipitation anomaly looks quite poor as well generally above average for uh Mar for all, uh, sorry we've gone through to march today so let's just uh change that over so we go down to there four to six months and that's the precipitation anomaly. it doesn't make a great deal of difference really that's still looking um above average for uh the precipitation uh for the early summer may to july uh, period. Let's just check that we did that okay. So yes, we did. So it's going for quite a uh, quite a coolish and wet signal for the uh, early summer at least. Whether that would carry on through the second half of the summer, we can't say. But um, it doesn't look great, and you get the idea from these models. It's very early days on this, but you get the idea that uh, a lot of these models are going for the kind of pattern you would anticipate uh, in a summer that occurs in a year ending in the number eight, such as we are in for this year, we're in 2018, um, and these are looking a little bit, um, uh, a little bit dodgy, I have to say, but it is very early days. Uh, we're only at the beginning of March. Most of these were generated back in February, uh, so, I mean, it's not worth losing any sleep over. Um, these models will chop and change uh, over the coming three months. It'll be interesting to see whether the signal that we've got here for this sneak peek actually is maintained with these models as we go through the summer uh, updates or whether they shift to a hotter and more settled type uh, pattern. So that's it. That's set the set everything up. That's set the scene for uh, the longer range for the next three months. We will uh, be doing regular um, analogs updates, summer updates uh, over the next three months, and uh, then we will arrive, of course, at the end of uh, uh, of May. Not sure quite what the date is yet, but uh, we'll arrive in the last Sunday of May. And we will release the uh, GazOffice.com 2018 summer forecast. So, um, be interested to see what happens. Keep checking back for all of the long-range updates for the summer. And uh, thanks for watching.